Hi folks, Harry Frank from Gray Machine here with my first Cinema 4D tutorial. I think all this time I've been doing After Effects tutorials and uh, I am a Cinema 4D user. I'm also a Maya user, but I use Cinema 4D a lot more lately. And recently I completed a project that has uh, had a, a few questions come my way in terms of uh, making this sort of uh, kind of cartoony um, uh, water drop kind of look. And I thought I take uh, a couple minutes to show you how to uh, create something like this in Cinema 4D. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this, but uh, the way I really like to do this is using Spline Wrap, which will require you to have the uh, MoGraph module. Uh, I assume most people these days, if you're running Cinema 4D, you'll at least have the MoGraph module. I'll also be using Sketch and Tune, but we don't have to use Sketch and Tune to do this. Uh, I'll show you both ways, with and without. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a capsule, and I want to create a spline wrap. A spline wrap essentially takes a piece of uh, geometry and wraps it along a spline. So to use spline wrap, I also need a spline. So I'm going to create a helix, and let me edit these so it's a little bit of a kind of a spiral. Let's create push the height up. There we go. First I need to uh, actually deform the capsule with the spline wrap. And when I select the spline wrap, I can go down here and drag my spline into the spline section right here. Now first, don't panic. What it's doing is wrapping that capsule along the path that I defined. Now as you can see that the capsule is actually created uh, up and down. It's created in the y-axis. Now, If I select that capsule, I go down to orientation here, we can see that we're in the y-axis. If I flip this to uh, x-axis, we can see that it's a lot cleaner now. Now we do need to uh, add some more segments to this to, to smooth it out a little bit, but you can see where we're going with this. If I select spline wrap, I can offset this um, and have it animate along the path. Right now it's fitting the capsule to the spline. I can also tell it to keep the original length like this. Uh, I tend to uh, set this to fit the spline and I'll adjust the uh, from and to here so I can have this move along like that. Right now it's also extending the path beyond the spline and sort of interpolates uh, the, the, the tangent angle at the end of the spline and keeps the geometry going along that path. I can say clamp it so that it'll just clamp it to the end like that. Now uh, we can fix this hard edge here. That's the next thing we're going to do. So if I go into the size section here, in fact, let me close out my layer browser. Uh, we've got two size settings here. Now the first one is the actual size of the element on the path. So let me back this up just a little bit. So I can control the size of the capsule itself uh, using this. Now, this spline size down here is the overall size along the spline. This is useful if you want it to sort of enter in and out in a tapered manner. So that's only going to be sized down at the beginning and end of the spline. So let me go back here and adjust the offset. So if I go like that, it just kind of feathers away rather than having that hard edge. Now go into the original uh, capsule here and boost up the number of segments. So there we go. Looking pretty good. Now, all we need to do is actually shade this the way we want. Now, let me pull up my, let me move this down here. Sketch and Tune by default will apply the same settings to the entire scene. So in here I've got uh, controls over uh, the overall scene shading. So the background is gonna be shaded uh, white and the object itself is sort of going to be a quantized version of the uh, default shader on it, or any shader on it, really. If I go in here and create a new material, make this, uh, let's make something kind of a bright orange. And I drop this on here. 
and if I render this, it's going to be a quantized version. So it's going to round it down to the six nearest colors based on the, the shading of it, which can be useful. We can also just say use a custom color and pick one like that. Now, the problem is, what if we have uh, more than one of these? So I'll call this drop one and drop two. And let me just rotate this spline so we can see the other one here. So now we've got two. What if we want these to be different colors? Right now it's shading the whole scene the same color. Well, uh, if I change the color here, it's going to change it for both of them. So what we can do is turn the shading off here and add, actually I can do it here. we will select both of these, go up to tags, sketch tags, sketch style. You can also just go down here and drag this sketch material and drop it on there. And this will also assign a uh, sketch style per object that I drop it upon. So now if I select this, I actually have the same settings here. I can say enable this uh, defaults to quantizing, or I can say use a custom color. We'll use red on that one. And then on this style tag, uh, I'll enable custom color and pick orange. There we go. Now, if you don't have access to Sketch and Tune, now if you don't have Sketch and Tune, we can go to Effect, Cell Render. Now, this is going to be, uh, well, a global color uh, throughout, and you don't really get much control over it. So it is a little bit of a bummer, but you can at least get that same Sketch and Tune kind of look. And then in After Effects, perhaps, you could uh, fill this with a different color or shift the colors around. Uh, cell render is just that. It's a very, very basic cell render that gives you um, somewhat of a, a sketch and tune look, but it gives you very, very little control over it. And that's how you do it. My name's Harry Frank. Thanks for watching.